Previously on Inside the Superdraft. If you look at every team in MLS right now, the basis of every team and the foundation is based on college players. Coming here, we, we, we knew uh, a majority, and if not, you know, 89 percent of the players out here today. Andrew Wenger, he's not here this week, but he's a talented player, really good soccer player, good athlete. If the opportunity presents itself, we'll definitely try to trade up. We're visiting this with just about every club and seeing what their interest level is. If you can get one guy out of the draft each year that winds up making a serious impact on your team, I think you've done a very good job. As the 2012 MLS Player Combine rolled on in Fort Lauderdale, teams continue to refine their lists and depth charts for draft day. Much of the responsibility for sporting Casey's board fell on goalkeeper coach John Pascarella. We all do a little bit of everything, um, but there's an emphasis for each of us. Mine happens to be with the college game, the domestic game in general, with the lower leagues as well. Uh, I've got a board that's just players of interest, all ages, all, all classes, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, that's probably 270, 280 players big broken up positionally, and then as the season starts, we transfer over onto the next one, our seniors. Okay, here's the guys that we look at that are seniors that we like, you know, and as we go along, that turns kind of into a depth chart, and then into that depth chart gets added, the GAs. When you're doing it year-round that way, and you've been doing it for a couple years, I think you feel like the board is somewhat close, but we have sat down now and tweaked it once since we've been here. Um, that'll probably happen again at least one more time before the draft. New England general manager Mike Burns was making a few moves as well, announcing a pair of international signings that may have altered the club's draft day plan somewhat. With the season that we had last year, we, had a lot, we have a lot of needs that we want to fill. Center back being one of them. We got the, um, the, the center back in, in Lozano from Columbia, um, and an attacker in Cardenas. Um, and so we feel that those two signings address, address some of our needs. Um, we're still looking for a center forward. Um, we've made no secret about that. We're still looking for someone on the left-hand side, um, whether it be as a left midfielder or a left back. Um, but we need to add a, a little bit, a, a few more elements in the attacking third. The impact had been building a roster from scratch for the past several months, and Director of Soccer Operations Matt Jordan was careful about the Combine's role in the huge number one selection his club would be making. The Combine's important, but you know we feel we've done our due diligence and our homework before, before this Combine. Uh, this is just kind of the, the final evaluation. At the end of the day, we know that the circumstances are challenging for these guys because they've never played with a lot of these guys. You know, some are playing out a couple different positions, and they've, they've, you know, they're, they're obviously have them in a lot of practices. So it's we've done a lot of research up to this point, but it's just kind of the final uh, cherry on top of the Sunday. We've discussed that very thing. How much weight do you give to a four-day window when you've tracked a guy for two or three years? For us, it really just kind of confirms. What we felt all along, yeah, this guy can fit in our system. No, he can't really fit in our system. Yeah, he's athletic enough. Yeah, he's technical enough. He, he has an idea of the game, or he doesn't. You have to do as much homework as possible coming into it. Um, you can't certainly, you cannot rely on the combine to make your decisions, right? You gotta, you gotta keep track of a lot of these kids throughout the course of their their college careers and seasons. Um, and sometimes this will verify maybe one way or the other on certain guys. But I think overall it was a decent combine. Um, I thought the level was decent, and it kind of went according to plan, at least in my opinion, over the last few years. To where the first day some a little hectic, and the guys were a little nervous, and they're they're working through the nerves a little bit. The second game seems to calm down a little bit, and then by the third game they're they're a little tired, <laughs> which is normal. In addition to finishing up their player evaluations, team staffs were finalizing their trade offers, a process that would continue right through draft day. Each guy brings its own, you know, brings its own qualities. You look at a guy like Maddox, you know, he has, he's just pure speed and power. You know, and that's something, you know, is, is good, uh, as uh, technical staffs as we all think we have, that's one thing you can't teach is that speed. He gets a lot of chances. He, get, he gives defenses you know, a lot of trouble. Uh, you look like a, a guy like Andrew Wenger, uh, a very versatile player, obviously. I, I still am not sure if there's ever been a player in NCAA history who's been rookie of the year in his league, defender of the year in his league, and also offensive player of the year, and also been first team American as a defender and as, a, as an attacker. So I think with Andrew, his, his versatility is, is, a, is a big asset. Certainly this year there seems to be an awful lot of talk 
um, about Wenger and about Maddox, and maybe not necessarily in that order. And everyone seems to be talking about those two players, um, and then the rest of the draft. We just we're in, I think, in a very unique spot because if, and it's a big if, right? Not a big if, but it's an if. If that plays out like that, then all of a sudden, you know, we kind of start. If we hold on, we start the rest of the draft. We feel very, very good with where we are right now. Um, you know, we have a, a definitely a very good idea of, of what we'd like to do. But at the same time, you know, there's been a lot of teams that have been coming at us with a lot of different, you know, scenarios. You know, whether it's, it's players or other situations that we have to keep our keep an open mind to. Have we been approached Will uh, with some possibilities of moving it? Sure, because you're at number three. And I'm sure the folks in Montreal are getting even more bombarded than us because they have the number one, right? They're in the driver's seat right now in terms of how the whole draft process works out. There's been a lot of dialogue between us and other clubs. Uh, you know, inquiring about that position, you know, different different possibilities for, for transactions. And, you know, we're evaluating all the options. You know, I've talked to a lot of different people that have done this for a long time. And by all accounts, a lot of people are saying this is one of the deepest and, and most talented drafts in a long time. And so we're, 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 we're excited to be a part of it. It's still a discussion. That's still honestly a discussion that there's a possibility of us maybe moving up. Most teams aren't making you such a sweet deal that you're going to pull the trigger right now today, right? Because everyone's, everyone's jockeying for position and everyone, you know, is, is trying to pull one over the other guy and what can you do? So we feel like there's, there's enough quality here that, you know, in our opinion, it would only make sense to trade the number three pick if we thought we were going to somehow, some way make our team better by doing so, right? And every other team is thinking the same way. Well, this is the fun part because we're, we're getting closer and closer now. So it is, it is the refinement of that board. It is the refinement of, of really the top, for us would have to be on that first day, the top 30, 35 players because we're picking at 16 and 30. So we want to know without having to spend a lot of thought on that day at the table. You know, at 16, here's who's left. This is our number one consideration at that pick. That's the way we look at it, is we want somebody that's gonna help us now, but we're also keeping in mind that we want the type of character, the type of person that's a fit with our organization, that's gonna sustain over time. You know, it's, it is a marathon, it's not a sprint. We understand that these guys, all of them, it, there's gonna be a transition. Uh, there's gonna be a transition, and, and that's, that's the reality of it, but we're, we're, we feel there's some great options. On the next episode of Inside the Super Draft, the impact are on the board and looking out for number one. So it's the next best thing to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. The phone keeps ringing for New England, but the Reds like where they stand. Every time we talk, we've got three guys that were above the yeah. rest. And Sporting KC waits and watches to see who falls. We're going to take him if he's alive. Yeah. If he's alive, we're taking him. From the podium to the tables, it's the inside scoop from the first round in KC on the next episode of Inside the Super Draft.